So uh, how can technology help with arthritis? Uh, let's get going. Um, we're going to Here's what we're going to do today. We're going to tell you more about AbilityNet and versus arthritis and a lot more about the services that we offer so that you can um, see where we, you can come to us and ask questions through helplines, for example. Um, AbilityNet will be talking about um, how we can help if you're living with arthritis, then versus arthritis is going to talk about their services. But the core of this is we've got some questions that we've um, prepared in advance that came in via the webinar sign up. And then we want to leave it to you to, to come up with your questions. So. Um, if you can uh, get, you know, ask us a question at any time, um, I'll be curating that as we go along. And then if there's anything uh, that we haven't picked up at the end, we'll do a full Q&A at the end as well. So um, next slide. I've introduced you to myself. Um, can I get Alex, can you tell me a bit about what your role is at AbilityNet, please? Uh, yeah, of course I can, Mark. Uh, hi, everybody. My name's Alex Barker. I'm the Advice and Information Officer for Ability Net, and I field inquiries from uh, anyone who wants to know. So people call in on the phone or they email us, or now you can use the online chat, and they ask us all sorts of questions about how they can make their technology work for them in a better way. And I also take requests for organizing volunteers to go out to individuals as well. Okay, cool, thank you. And Sarah, can you tell us about what you do at Versus Arthritis? Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, at the charity, I'm primarily responsible for um, developing new products and services um, with a view to generating some income for, for the charity. But really, um, from our research <laughs> fund, um, looking to um, listen to the, the needs of, the, of people with arthritis and ensure that products and services are being developed according to um, the issues that they have raised. Great, thank you. And, and Mags, hiya. Hi, so I'm a helpline advisor for Versus Arthritis. So we answer any queries that people have about the condition, how to manage it, how it is affecting different aspects of their lives. Um, and I'll talk later about how people can approach the helpline and the different ways that we can help people. Brilliant, thank you. Well, well welcome. Um, and I should say that um, from AbilityNet's point of view, a lot of the work that we do is in partnership. So AbilityNet is a pan-disability organisation and, and, you know, working with an organisation like Versus is great. You know, finding that common ground with specialist charities is, is what we do. So um, what we'd like to know from, the, from, you, from you guys is what um, is some stuff about you. So we're going to ask you some questions. Um, I'm going to launch a poll and, and ask you um, whether you are someone living with arthritis, someone caring for someone with arthritis, uh, a healthcare professional or some other. If the answer's other, please use the chat box so that we can understand what your interests may be because there's clearly going to be a whole range of different stuff that we're going to talk about and um, we can then tailor uh, the information we provide to uh, the particular needs that you have. So chat box, good place to tell us who you are and what you're doing here if it's not listed um, and if not, um, uh, you just tick one of the boxes and we'll, we'll get the skew in terms of what the sorts of information would be most useful to you. So I've got a couple of question answers coming in just so that you know. We've got um, a, somebody saying they're a digital accessibility specialist, a DSA needs assessor for, digital, uh, for disability disabled students allowance, someone living with RA and also a healthcare professional, have RA and I'm also an oste osteopathy student, an assistive technology trainer, a disability support advisor in a university, a charity professional, um, have relative living with arthritis, uh, accessibility champion in a university, um, Heather from Skyscanner, hi, hi Heather, uh, and uh, uh, yes, yeah, so a real range there. So uh, yeah, I think um, what I'm gonna show you is the poll. So the poll results show that um, most people on here have an interest in the fact that there's someone living with arthritis, so there's a personal interest. And then I think there are people caring for others. And then the others, as you heard, is a real range. Um, people in different settings probably looking for an insight around how technology and arthritis, uh, or how technology can help people with arthritis. I'm confident we're gonna cover that ground, um, uh, across all of that ground, really, looking at the materials we have. But if there's anything we've missed, um, we're probably not gonna delve too much into digital design and, and arthritis. It'll be much more about assistive technology. Um, but certainly we can touch on that as we go along. 
So, a uh, bit about AbilityNet. Um, we want to create a digital world accessible to all. We're about um, offering um, a range of services to people um, to help them achieve their goals at home, at work, in education, and on the internet. So, we help people uh, access information and use the information in a variety of settings. We have tools like My Computer My Way, which is a, a free guide to all of the accessibility features in all mainstream um, settings, uh, mainstream operating systems. And we also have a range of free online fact sheets, um, including some around arthritis, which I'm sure we'll mention. Um, and uh, so, Alex, over to you. Just starting with us, what, what, do, what can we do to help people with arthritis? Okay, so uh, as you started to say, Mark, we have lots of resources on on our website. So we've got over twenty, look over twenty five different fact sheets, uh, going from uh, how to help someone if they've got arthritis right through to visual impairment, and how to fund a computer. We've we've been doing webinars for maybe three or four years now, and we've got all of them archived so if you wanted to come to a, a webinar but couldn't get to it you can always play it back uh, as mark said we've got my computer my way so if you've got uh, a smartphone if you've got a tablet or if you've got a laptop or desktop and just need to make simple changes to your computer that are free and easy you can do that that way. So an example might be just slowing your keyboard down if you get too many unwanted characters. We've got quite a lot of useful links to signpost to other organisations and charities. A part of our work is to try and, and raise awareness with people about how websites can be made more accessible so we've got some really useful digital accessibility resources and one of the other things that we do is we can do a workplace uh, assessment so if, if you've got if you're working at the moment and you need some advice and you want someone to come in and have a look at your working environment we can do that under the workplace adjustments I, it's worth mentioning a couple of things, Alex. One is uh, everything you mentioned, except that workplace assessment is free. Free, yeah. Workplace assessment isn't free. Yep. Um, and somebody's asked about my computer, my way. Uh, that's up to date with the latest operating systems as they're released. Um, within, I think we do it within a quarter of the release coming out. We mm. will have updated any extra features or changes that have come through on the operating system. So, um, it, and it's very practical. Um, it's very specifically about making the actual changes, which menu you have to press and what the button is that's relevant. And it's also step by step. Yeah. Is, yeah. Cool. Um, and certainly, uh, Alex, you run the helpline. I mean, uh, you, that's also part of our service. So people can call in um, and, and ask about um, and anything in terms of disability and technology. We work across all technologies and all disabilities. Um, yeah, of course. Can. How often do you hear about arthritis in, in terms of calls that we get? I would say that arthritis is probably about 20 to 25% of the calls that we take. Right. And lots of people uh, are fairly of the older age group and they say, I've been using computers for 20 years. I started to get arthritis. I don't know what to do. Can you help me? And we'll come up with some solutions for them. Great. And I think um, that just just particularly from the point of view of everybody's here are around the difference between, um, you know, living with arthritis when you first experience it. And also one of the things we're aware of, because it's something that does, uh, you know, change with age is also your experience in, in usage of technology may change with age mm. as well. So clearly there are different uses and different t things that people are trying to do with their computers at different times in their life. And so arthritis may or may not affect them in different ways at home, at work, in education, we say, you know, there, there may be different tasks you're trying to do. Great. So um, can we tell us, I think it's Mag's going to tell us about um, Versus Arthritis. Yes, certainly. So Versus Arthritis is a new charity um, we created following the merger of Arthritis Research UK and Arthritis Care. 
Um, so the latest estimates show that actually there are 18.8 million people living with arthritis and related conditions in the UK. Um, so that's three in 10 people, which is quite consistent, Alex, with the number of people who are contacting you, really, isn't it? Mm. Um, so we're here to demand and deliver more for them, really. Um, arthritis, as we all know, it impacts massively on people's life, whether it's affecting their work, their ability to care for their family, managing and moving without pain, living independently. Um, it has such a massive impact on people's quality of life, or it has the potential to. So, it, and it's very often just dismissed. You know, it's seen sometimes as an inevitable part of aging. Um, and it can be seen as something which is only an older person's condition, which clearly isn't, isn't the case. Um, and it can be just shrugged off as a bit of arthritis or what do you expect at your age kind of thing. So as a charity, we don't believe that that's acceptable. So we're, doing, we're investing in cutting edge and delivering cutting edge research. Uh, we provide quality services and advice. We campaign for arthritis to be treated as a health priority. And the idea is so that the pain, isolation and fatigue of arthritis are no longer tolerated. We just don't think that's acceptable. Cool, and I don't know if we're gonna come onto this in a moment, but in terms of your research, do you have any information around, you know, the impact of technology and, or the impact of arthritis on people's use of technology? I don't, I'm not personally involved in the research side of things, but, I, but I'm sure we have that information. We, we, there's a, a report just come out every year, the one at the um, musculoskeletal health report, and that includes a lot of information and data and statistics. I think it probably has got that kind of data in it. Yeah. Um, but you can look at the research information on our website to see what we already have put together in that information. Okay, cool. Sarah. Okay. And I guess I might be stealing Sarah's thunder there. So. Yeah. No, no, not at all, yeah. Sorry, another question, because clearly this is a huge scale in terms of uh, the people who are living with arthritis. Is there anything about the demographics of that that you could talk about, you know, in the sense of, the, you know, is it primarily older people? We might think it is, but I guess we're going to find that there are other, um, other yeah. issues as well that aren't just to do with ageing. The socioeconomic factors play a big role in, in arthritis and, and pain. Um, so that report that I just mentioned does highlight the impact that that can have on people's lives. If a lot of people who have arthritis, it affects whether they're in work or not. And again, that can have a huge impact. So it, it can have a knock-on effect. The cause and effect thing is something that the researchers are looking at um, and, and trying to find out places where they can make the biggest impact with that. Really. So yeah, there's a, a, a fact, it's, it's not, to do with age, obviously things like osteoarthritis, the, the potential to get osteoarthritis increases as we get older, but arthritis itself can affect, affect people of any age group. And it's dangerous to assume that it's only something that affects older people because then the diagnosis can be missed. Um, yeah. Cool. So um, Sarah, I think you're gonna tell us a bit more about support that you offer. Is that right or is that you, Meg? I can't remember which slide this is. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that bit as well. Okay. So, um, what we what we offer is we have uh, ways that people can engage with us as a charity and with other people with arthritis. So we have a helpline, a multi-channel helpline. We have an online community group, and we have groups and services where people can meet face to face. So I'll tell you a little bit about the helpline first. So at the helpline, we aim to provide information, advice, and emotional support to people living with arthritis and to anybody who is um, supporting someone who's living with arthritis. So what we want to do is empower people to understand more about their condition, um, to know more about the treatment options and the self-help options available. And so we're providing people with the most up-to-date evidence-based information um, so that's all based on the latest research and insight and using medical information. The idea really is to empower people with information to manage their own condition and to make sure that they're getting the appropriate treatments that are available to them and all the necessary support. Um, so the helpline itself, it's open from 9 to 8, Mondays to Fridays. So, um, so it's multi-channel, which means you can call us, email, write to us or contact us through social media. We always try to answer people's questions 
and if we can't answer them or we know there's a more appropriate organisation to support someone with the, the things that we've mentioned, we'll signpost this likability net due to other specialist organisations and support groups. Um, it's important for me to emphasise that we're not medically trained on the helpline, so we are trained by medics in our flighters and we're used to having conversations with people around our flighters. The helpline was set up because when we asked people with our flighters what they wanted, a lot of people said, I just want to talk it through with someone else. And there's very little time in medical appointments to actually get your head around everything and ask all of those questions. Um, so we can't offer individual medical advice. We can explain about drugs and side effects and risks and how they work and that kind of thing. But, you know, we're not medically trained, so it's important to know that we can't provide that information. The helpline um, is free, so it's a free, free phone number when people are calling from within the UK. And our evidence is really aimed at people in the UK in terms of, you know, um, treatment options and what's available in the UK in terms of support. So just briefly, the online community is a safe place where people can talk to each other about living with arthritis and find useful information from each other. So it's more of a peer support environment, really. You can also chat to the helpline through that um, online forum. But the idea really is that people can ask each other questions, share about how they're feeling, and just tell others about tips and hints and to share information. Um, the groups and services are run, some of them are run um, by people with arthritis, for people with arthritis and their families. Um, and it's run differently in different areas. So we have branches across the nation. I think there are 500 across the nation. Um, so they're offering face-to-face -face support, peer support, over the phone or drop-in or um, by attending group sessions. And we also have services for young people and families and activities and events that people can attend. Um, there's also a lot of information that, can be avail that is available through our website, um, booklets that we send out for free within the UK. And you can ask our virtual assistant. So if you don't want to ring the helpline and speak to, to someone, you can ask the virtual assistant a question. It's learning as it goes along, so it's, it's able to answer quite a lot of um, information now and sign people through to information. And then if, if it can't answer the question, it would encourage you to ring the helpline and seek further advice. Cool, that sounds brilliant. Great, and what sort of numbers of people are asking you for help uh, uh, currently? Ooh, I don't know, I'm not. I'm Thousands, not. hundreds? <laughs> um, hundreds a day. Um, oh, yeah. We're between 50 and 100 a day, depending on how busy we are. And, and then plus all the social media inquiries and emails. Yeah, cool. The odd letter as well. Great. Thank you very much. Sounds fantastic. Um, so uh, don't forget, if you've got any questions, please use the Q&A box. Um, we're, what we're going to do now is um, ask, you, ask you some questions. Um, but I I'm also want to encourage you to start thinking about what you want to know so that we can... Uh, answer your questions. Uh, we're sort of going into the interactive bit now. So I'm going to just launch the poll and, and ask you, um, for those of you, because it did turn out that a reasonable proportion of you do have arthritis, um, what area of your body experiences the most pain because of that? Um, and I think we can reflect that some of the sort of feedback will be about where technology may be interesting and useful with that. Um, again, once again, if you do have anything outside the, the questions we've asked, um, you can uh, put something in the chat box and just indicate something to us. So we've got um, 55 people on at the moment. So I'm just looking at how many of you answered. If you, if you, if you are gonna click, please click now. Somebody's mentioned knees, not mentioned, uh, uh, which is actually in the list. So just um, most joints is another answer. All of the above, presumably. Um, and uh, just picking up the, the, the chat box things there. Um, somebody saying I have CP and can only use one hand. So my hand from years of overuse, I now have arthritis. So that's a knock on effect of another condition. Um, and that's in hands and feet. Okay, so um, I'm gonna close the poll. Last chance to click on something. Um, I'm gonna share that with you and just show that most of the people have mentioned their hands. 50% of the people who answered mentioned hands and then impact on hips and knees. Um, my assumption would be that, that the impact on I've uh, of, 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 of not been able to use your hands in the way you could before will have a direct impact on your computer usage. Of course, that's a, a very obvious thing that I, 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 we would expect. <clears throat> that
that um, using a computer mouse in particular or keyboard is obviously going to be challenging uh, for somebody with uh, 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 any issues in their hands. So um, do you have any observations about that, Alex or Mags or, or Sarah? You've seen um, hands, hips, knees. Were you thinking that there was anything in particular that would be relevant um, for, for people around those issues? I would guess in terms of hands, it's all about trying to reduce the amount of time you use on a keyboard or maybe give someone a different keyboard so that they're not experiencing so much pain. Because I, I know sometimes even though your hands might be in pain, you still want to get a piece of work done. So it's about trying to reduce the pain while still giving you the opportunity to access your computer. Cool. And Sarah or Mags, did you anything that you, you experienced yeah. as a helpline support? Presumably these things come through. Yeah, they do. I was <laughs> expecting hands to come up more just because of the nature of the, the webinar, really, that we'll get more questions about, osteo well, any osteoarthritis or any of the inflammatory um, conditions that impact on the hands. So, yeah. And, We've got Sorry, just one extra just been thrown in there yeah. is the neck was interesting, isn't it? Because that's often the case about posture and other things. As yes, well, that's course. true. And, yeah. And, yeah. Cool. So we've got some questions which um, we uh, we asked you to tell us what you were interested in in advance. So I'm going to um, read this out. These are questions that came in directly from you and we're going to go through them. But uh, do please now use the Q&A box for anything that you're thinking that you arrived today with a question, um, even if we end up answering it elsewhere. Uh, it's good for us to have a record as well. The Q&A is recorded in, in, within the software. And so we've got a way then of seeing what concerns and issues you have, even if they don't all get successfully covered off today. So please do use this, the Q&A box um, to let us know what it is you want to know. So the first one I've got here is, I'm a touch typist, but the pain in my hands from arthritis is making it increasingly difficult to type. What advice do you have? I'm not quite clear whether they just go alphabetically, Alex, Sarah, or Mags. Is that an Alex answer first? I, I think it might be, yes. Mm -hmm. So um, I would say there are several things to look at. And the first thing is to see whether the keyboard that you're using can be adapted in any way or whether the keyboard that you're using is the most suitable one. So a lot of keyboards have, quite, have got quite a bit of uh, an almost clicky keyboard action and that might be causing you difficulties. There are lots of soft touch and light touch keyboards out there. There are even keyboards that are made out of rubber which give you a totally different um, keyboard action and it might be worthwhile looking at one of those, might be worthwhile looking at voice recognition and it also might be worthwhile looking at technologies such as word prediction or even built-in <laughs> software in Word called uh, Autocomplete that make it easier to um, uh, protect you without causing you too much difficulty. You, you may well find, though, that it's just not one answer. There's not one golden... There's not one going on, uh, on, but it might be several different pieces of technology that help you out. Cool. So Sarah or Mags, anything to add to that around touch typing in particular and the use of the keyboard? Yeah, I think what you're trying to do is avoid the, too much of the repetitive movement, which is leading to some of the problems, really. So um, there are exercises that would be recommended for people with, with problems in their hands to keep their hands as mobile as possible and try and um, avoid them from getting stiff and painful so that can make a big difference to managing that kind of condition so there's there are exercises that you can do that you can you can be recommended by a hand therapist or a physiotherapist um, we have information that we can um, send out at the moment there's not very much information on our website about hand pain. Our content team are currently updating information, so that will be on there at some point soon, hopefully. Um, but in the meantime, we can send some information out by email. So if, if you want to contact us, we can certainly help you with that kind of information. But 
in general, trying to keep the movement in the hands. There are um, things that can be done to help with the pain. Um, obviously, when, when you're resting your hands, things that you can do. Trying to do the movements and not touch type for too long, as Alex said, about breaking the activities up can be really helpful. Um, but, but things like wax bath therapy can be really helpful for the hands. Um, and splints, working and resting splints. So we would always advise seeking professional advice about what's best in your situation to manage that condition. Great. Anything, Sarah, that you wanted to add? Um, Absolutely no. Um, nothing further to add. I think Max and Alex have covered it. <laughs> cool. So one thing that's popped up in the Q&A here that, um, apart from the keyboard stuff I, I think we'll move on to this in a moment is about voice and voice to, using your voice to control the computer um, so uh, I, I think we've got that further on I believe we're going to talk about voice control and if not should we just talk about it now because people are asking about speech to text and using dictation which obviously means you don't need to use the keyboard um, Alex I, I'll start with you there's a question specifically here about um, what, what we think of, uh, or whether we recommend particular software on, on Mac iOS, it's, it says here, but of course it, it, it's relevant to say that we offer advice across all platforms. Do you have bits of software that you recommend or that you hear that people use most successfully um, for controlling the computer with their voice? Sure, so um, using the Mac is quite interesting because uh, at one time, Dragon or Nuance used to make um, a voice recognition program specifically for the Mac. However, it is no no longer supported and you certainly can't get that package. What you do have on the Mac is you have some inbuilt speech recognition, which uh, although I've never used it, it's supposed to be fairly good and you can get to it from the menu on the top left hand corner so if you click on the apple menu and go into control panel you ought to be able to sort it out and or if you go to my computer my way you can get more information if you uh, also if you've got a mac of course you've got siri built into it so siri for those people who don't know is almost like a personal assistant so you can ask it questions and it will go away and find out the answers and certainly on uh, iPads and iPhones you can set it up to do certain commands say sending a text to a certain contact just by using your voice Cool. So, um, I mean, certainly voice is something we should, I should mention, we have a fact sheet all about controlling the computer with your voice. It's something which covers all sorts of different areas. There are lots of reasons why people may be using voice. They're working, you know, things like Alexa are becoming mainstream, but all of, all of the mainstream operating systems have voice control. I think there's a couple of interesting comments that somebody's put in. Um, firstly, that dictation in Office 365 is surprisingly good particularly if you have good headphones. Getting the right equipment, I think, for voice control is important. Some will work much better if you've got a, head, a, a decent headset and it can follow your voice better. Um, and the other one somebody's asked here about using um, Otter and Grammarly, which are a sort of particular programs, Grammarly in particular, around spell checking. But it takes longer to correct errors than it is to type. And I think my experience of using voice is always that it's fairly easy to get the information in in the first place but it can be very difficult to um, then go back and correct things successfully. So you almost end up putting it in with your voice and then going back and correcting it with a keyboard. I tend to find that's what happens. And I think that's a challenge if you don't have specialist software, if you're not using things like Dragon, which are designed to control the computer as well as just do voice control. But as I say, there's a fact sheet about that on our website. And I think it's a, a common question and, and the technology changes all the time. So it's also possibly something that pops up in your forums, Mags and, you know, the, the people are asking, oh, I've got an Alexa, has anybody tried to do this sort of thing? We see that as well, so. Great, next question. Um, do you just have to live with the pain all day and all night? <laughs> that sounds like a Mags or Sarah question, I reckon. So, what do you well, do? I'll take this one, Sarah, yeah. Okay, um, so hopefully, no. There is, there is a lot of um, treatment and self-help help options available. 
It obviously depends on the condition that the person has. I believe the person who asked this question has osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. Um, but there have been quite a, a lot of questions about pain, so it's something we know people want information on. So um, it's about being able to make informed decisions. So in terms of the treatment options, I'll go through them first, and then we'll talk about some self-management options. I'm having to keep it very general. Um, obviously, if you phoned the helpline, we'd be able to be more specific and explore what um, someone's options were and, and what they're interested in and their, their preferences. Um, and, and provide advice accordingly, really. But in general, the pain relief options would be um, simple paracetamol, uh, painkillers like paracetamol, um, the anti inflammatory drugs, also known as NSAIDs, uh, which relieve the pain but also reduce the inflammation. Um, the next level up would be compound painkillers like cocodamol, paracetamol, codeine. And then you've got the opioids, um, codeine, tramadol, and morphine. Um, most of those painkillers are also available in the form of gels, patches, and creams, so that you're not having to ingest them. You can apply them to the skin itself and they're absorbed that way. Um, they're part of the picture. Um, obviously, there's a big concern about people becoming over reliant on medication. And sometimes people don't want to take any medication at all because they're worried that they will become over-reliant on it. The key thing to remember about um, pain is it's important to manage it in some way um, and to try and somehow switch those pain signals off. So over-relying on drugs isn't uh, necessarily a good thing, but there are, it's about getting the right balance. And if you need those painkillers, Obviously, there are risks and side effects and benefits of each of those drugs, really. Um, a lot of people on the helpline call us because they can't take the anti-inflammatory drugs and they want to know what alternatives are available. Um, so there are various reasons that people wouldn't want to be taking NSAIDs. And certainly, you wouldn't want to be self-medicating for long-term pain. Um, in that way, so you would need to, we would advise you to seek a medical opinion because long term use of things like the NSAIDs does have a risk of affecting the digestive system in the stomach and leading to problems. There are ways around that. There are um, things like proton pump inhibitors, drugs that can be prescribed alongside the NSAIDs to protect the stomach lining. And if you weren't aware of that as an option and didn't really want to tell their GP how reliant they were on those drugs and there are ways around that really so it is important. The main piece of advice we give about pain is it's important to get pain under control so that you can move. So the rheumatologist that trains us is very clear about when he's training um, other medics, the medic sorry, he would say don't just give painkillers so that someone can just um, lie around and, and not be in pain. Give them so they can do something active when, they're, when the pain's as well managed as it can be, because it's that movement that's going to make the biggest difference. Okay. Now, it, again, like we said, it depends on the type of arthritis that, that you're um, wanting to know about. Pain management, there are drugs um, called uh, DMARDs, the, the, the drugs that help dampen down the immune system for types of inflammatory arthritis. They're not painkillers, but they do get the, the condition under control and therefore alleviate the pain. They um, there are um, therapies as well, so um, physiotherapy, Hydrotherapy, occupational therapists can come and help people as well. But there are um, talking therapies such as CBT, which can be really helpful. The research has shown the link between the brain and the body, um, which isn't to say that it's all in the mind. A lot of people think that that's, that's what we mean by that. But the feedback loop between physical pain and, and the brain is becoming more and more well recognised. So anything that you can do to break the pain cycle, even if it's a temporary thing, is going to be really useful in terms of managing the condition. We see there are other treatment options, like if, if, if you're at the point where surgery is necessary to alleviate pain, um, that could be a, a good solution for people. Um, and it can help to reduce pain and improve mobility. 
there are excellent pain management programs available. So um, going to a physio, um, going to a department in a hospital, being referred to a pain management clinic can be helpful. But there's a really good program that since January this year has been um, being rolled out across the country. It's something that Versus Arthritis invested in um, at the beginning. It, it's been so successful. It was run in physiotherapy departments and hospitals initially. It's aimed at people who have a specific condition, osteoarthritis, but in the knees and the hips. And it's been incredibly useful for people to attend that escape pain program. Um, and you can find more about that if you Google escape pain or you research for it on our website. Um, in terms of self-management options, the, the, the only real um, treatment than surgery really for, oste for osteoarthritis is self-management. Um, so the idea with osteoarthritis is to try and keep the muscles as strong as possible around the joint that protects the integrity of the joint. Making sure that your posture is good, using joint protection techniques, they can all be really helpful in terms of managing uh, yourself. Uh, obviously, with advice from a physiotherapist, usually. Uh, but even things like heat packs, wheat bags, the wax bath therapy that I mentioned earlier for the hands, so that's a paraffin wax. That you melt um, and then you can put your hands in that water in that uh, wax available yeah. um, so suppliers pharmacies um, some sports shops um, sorry that's mostly with splints you can get the, you know. Max can I sorry can I interrupt sorry I, I want I'm conscious of the time yeah um, can you point us to a place on the website with that type of health related information absolutely so if, if you were to go with a section on the website the easiest thing uh, is two places one to look for the painkillers and NSAIDs so you would go to about arthritis choose treatments look at then from there go to drugs and from there go to painkillers and NSAIDs and then for the, the self-management options under the specific condition, under so for osteoarthritis, whichever inflammatory arthritis you have, you can find out information under the condition and then go to manage so you can find out a lot more there. Great, thank you. Can I just quickly add that um, we're investing over 24 million into new um, pain treatments. Um, so that's recently been launched. So because there has been no new advancements in pain treatment. So we are heavily investing in, into this. Okay. And we're also supporting some innovative research, which is non-pharmacological based, which looks at retraining the brain and so that um, the body um, no longer feels pain. Cool. Thank you. Um, I, somebody's mentioned a TENS machine as well, so I know, I mean, I'm sure there are other devices. Yes, that was, that was one of the things in that quick list. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm keen to get back to the assistive technology bit as much as I can, because I, I don't, we've got a see, see some questions coming up in here. Um, so uh, another question we had here, we have touched on this a bit. Um, uh, can you recommend a good voice dictation program that could pick up a female voice? Dragon and Google don't do that. I noticed that somebody mentioned that they didn't think that uh, Siri isn't very good at understanding northeastern accents um so alex what's our general feedback about um the ways in which these these voice um uh technologies can can deal with different voices sure and we would say as an organization that dragon or nuance is the industry standard and i was really interested when i when i saw this question and if, if, if I had a chance to talk to the person who raised this question, I would be saying, and I, I, I don't want to know what sort of microphone they used or how they actually set the device up, or perhaps I don't want to get one of our volunteers to go out and have a look because um, Dragon really beats anything else hands down and we would always say that if it's set up properly and you've got the right microphone you should be able to and you and you have a bit of time and you've got a little bit of patience you ought to be able to get it to work if it's not working it soon it 
it would seem to me that something's not right somewhere else. Okay, cool. So the standard at the moment is that it should work broadly. There's no yep. reason why a female or a particular yep. accent should cause a problem. I think that's true. We, we, our experience suggests that's true in general, particularly when you're using a headset, that makes it hugely better. Sure. And of course, that means that an Alexa or a Google Assistant where you're not using a headset is probably less good. And I think that's the industry standard at the moment. Yep. I, I think it's also important to mention that there is this big difference between using the um, voice control to input content. So when you're speaking to it, and then the other bit, when you're controlling it. And yeah. it may be that there's a difference in the quality between that as well, that it may be better at hearing your spoken word in terms of putting text into it, but it may yeah. not necessarily be quite so good in terms of instructions. And, and what I would also say, it's all you go out and doing, doing the basics right. So you've got to get into a nice, easy conversational chat with with dragons so I could be chatting like this and it would be printing out what what I wanted it to do. And it's also worthwhile saying that if you used it six years ago and it didn't really work, you might be put off it. What I would say is a voice recognition technology has come on leaps and bounds. And for example, it only took me 10 minutes to set voice recognition up uh, a couple of years ago where before it would take you an hour and you'd have to read several paragraphs of text and that just shows how technology has changed so don't get a bad experience that you might have had before put you off from using voice recognition now okay i've got an interesting um, uh, question here from somebody who raised that actually about what reason adjustments will employers tolerate <laughs> And then in particular here mentioning that intolerant colleagues in open plan offices meant that Dragon wasn't useful. Um, my, my observation would be that's the whole point about reason adjustments is that they need to be something that works for you in a practical sense. What we do is we, we assess the workplace not the, and, and don't just recommend the technology. So you're looking at a solution that fits into your work pattern. Um, and if you don't have headsets, for example, that mean that you can uh, talk and, and, and hear your computer, then, then it may well be that that um, causes problems with your um, uh, colleagues. So that's not a reasonable adjustment. You know, it needs to be something that goes, uh, works in the, in the context of the work you're being given. Um, and we do a lot of work around that in the workplace with different employers uh, and working with employees. Um, our particular bit is to do the assessment, but there's lots of information about what is and isn't reasonable, which is much more about the relationship you have with your employer. Um, so uh, I think that's that in terms of the use of technology in the workplace for people with arthritis it's not only about choosing the right software it's also about making the workplace work for you about making sure that it works appropriately in terms of your work pattern the types of tasks that you're given it's not just saying that one piece of technology is going to fix everything um, and so I think that's part of the challenge and, and uh, it equally means that you may need multiple solutions I can see again you're saying that it affects it in different ways in different times and I think that's also part of being reasonable as an employer that you may have different solutions in place and, and our great mantra is one size never fits all so it's never that one piece of software is exactly the right thing in any given situation it's definitely down to the individual setup and then it's down to the quality of support you're getting from your uh, occupational health specialists in the in the HR team or whatever your employer is providing and, and then the question of reasonableness is you know are they being reasonable in the support they're giving so that's a is a difficult one to answer from the point of view of the technology but it is definitely from an employment point of view relatively straightforward for them to understand what is reasonable or not um, and that's really the, the, the push back I think at that point um, I've got a quick one here I think I'll just jump over this one I'm afraid because I, I, we're running out of time um, I, I'm, I'm interested in sharing um, uh, with you the information we have and also getting an, any um, feedback I'm conscious that we've mentioned um, uh, some links and things and and on here you'll find uh, where you can get it from AbilityNet so these will all be shared afterwards you can go to um, uh, you can go to our free resources and our fact sheets and our helpline. Our helpline number uh, is on here 0800-269-545. But we also have, mentioning the workplace stuff, we have some free tools and some free advice, um, which, which links to your use of technology in the workplace. And we also have something called Clear Talents, which helps you identify your own needs. There is a, a free version of that, um, but it's actually a tool that um, an employer would use typically.
So there's lots of useful information there. These will be shared afterwards. Um, and um, from Versus Arthritis, there's uh, your, your website here, versusarthritis.org slash get dash help. Your helpline number is 0800 520 slightly more of a pattern than ours. And uh, an, an email helpline at versusarthritis.org. So I wanted to get that in before we look at any more questions, just so that you know that's where these answers could be found. Um, so uh, I've got another one here about, um, uh, this is more of a, a health related one. This is uh, for you versus arthritis. I think, what can I do if the wait time for hospital appointments is over six months and I can't get access to the physio team? I guess it depends on obviously the type of arthritis, but what you can find on our website is lots of information about managing different conditions. So um, I don't know, I can't see the question. I don't know if the person said what type of arthritis they have, have they, Mark? Um, no. No, okay. So in general, self-help techniques are gonna be around movement, really trying to get the pain under control. Like I said before, if, if you can see the information on there about the self-management tips, on the rheumatoid arthritis information, for example, there are tips about managing a flare-up, which could be helpful in this case, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's just about trying to self-manage and, and speaking to the GP in the meantime until you get through to that appointment. Cool. Um, oh, I've sorry, just, can just, I just say as well, Mark, yeah. I just remember, we have exercises for all the different joints on our website as well. So you can find that under um, um, common aches and pains and then go to joints and you can find specific exercises for particular joints that might help in the meantime. I've got a, a, a top tip from Louisa here about headsets, actually. Um, we use heads, USB headsets and not the ones with the jack plugs. I, I, mm -hmm. I concur. They definitely work better. Yep. And also talk to Dragon in a BBC English type voice, uh, which sounds a bit, it sounds annoying, but I wonder whether that actually works. You, you might have a, a voice dictation voice, sadly. Um, it does work sometimes, but we've got Alexa and Google in our house and they both respond to different things in different ways. So uh, we're not advocates of that in any great way. We know that there's a lot of um, inconsistency there. But I think the headphone thing is definitely a top tip um, and having, um, uh, having the best equipment that you can. And that's obviously back to the fact that if you're at work, then that should be something your employer is helping you with. Um, Louisa is also saying that distraction techniques work best, things like reading, mm -hmm. listening to music and watching TV. So. Great, so um, I think we've worked our way through for most of the questions. Um, oh, and somebody said they're using a noise cancelling headset with Dragon, and that, that I guess would suggest that that works better. Um, the noise cancelling bit may well be making your voice clearer, um, and also obviously you can hear more clearly. So um, it, I, certainly in terms of the, the, the equipment that you're using to control it with your voice, that's one thing. Um, I think Alex, just to round up again about the text, uh, about the keyboards, because I, I think that's very much an area uh, just to remind people that we have a whole load of resources around keyboards and mice, um, alternatives to keyboards and mice. I'm sure that's something you talk about most days for various reasons. And yes, we do. Uh, I mean, I, I just want to go back to voice recognition and say one of the issues that some do have with voice recognition is that their computer isn't that powerful and you do need quite a lot of memory for voice recognition to work so the more memory and the higher processor the better to, to go back to keyboards yes there are there must be about 10 or 15 different types of keyboards and mice you could go for what we would always say is there are lots of companies out there which will let you have mice rollables and keyboards on a sale and return basis don't just go sell and buy something just because you look at it uh, or, or you like the look of it it might meet your requirements but then again it might not and also it might be worthwhile pointing out that there's that's the software that can take away or negate the need to click on the mouse cursor or the rollerball cursor and these are all little simple ways of just being able to reduce the pain and discomfort you feel when using a computer great thank you so um unless there's any other questions i think what we want to do is just launch the last poll we just want to know we hope we've been helpful in this we know that we've obviously only scratched the surface in some ways of some questions um but hopefully we've given you a pointer to some very specific 
um, te technical advice, particularly, and also some great um, signposting from Versus to their website and some of the sort of most often answered questions that they have. Um, we just, it's always useful for us to know how well we've met that need. And also we'd like to know any questions that we haven't answered. You're more than welcome to put things in now that you would like to know afterwards and we can find a way to come back to you um, uh, with information in the future. So uh, please do let us know that. Um, while you're filling that in, I just want to say a huge thank you to, to Mag, Sarah and Alex. Um, and uh, Neil, you're raising a hand here. I don't, uh, I can see. Um, I can't do very much with that. Can you use the chat box to tell me what it is? Because uh, that's the only thing I can do. Uh, and um, so Mag, Sarah and Alex, thank you very much for that. They're, they're, uh, the thing to emphasize is that this is their day job is answering questions of the type that you've heard. So please do make a note of those helpline numbers and the email and the website information. Um, we also have a, a network of 300 volunteers that can go into people's homes um, that are used to helping people with all sorts of needs and can make um, uh, practical in, in, uh, you know, support in terms of technology, but also have a, have a good idea around issues such as arthritis about the sorts of technologies that may help you. You can ask us to um, find a volunteer for you to come into your home. They can also work with you remotely if that's more appropriate. We have volunteers all over the country. So again, that's something that we can give you quite practical help with um, if that's what you need. Great. Uh, so, um, Neil, you're saying I've set up uh, ITC co-op. Uh, so uh, is that something that you want to pass on? Then let us know and we can pass on links uh, to other people. Great. So thanks, Mags. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Alex. Thank you all for attending. I hope you found it uh, useful. It looks like most of you have. Um, if there were problems that you had with the technology or had any other issues or things that we didn't answer, please do use, a, use any contact method that you want to keep in touch with us um, and we'll share all of our resources afterwards so you can make use of the information in future. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.